Hi, I'm Paul Cook, and I'm on the faculty at the University of Colorado College of Nursing. I'm going to tell you about a study in which we use smartphones to help people with HIV stay adherent to their prescribed medications. One of the oldest dilemmas in healthcare is how to get patients to take their prescribed medications. Nowhere is this more true than in the treatment of HIV, where patients are asked to take one or more pills at specific times each day without missing more than 5% of the doses. New mobile technology offers new opportunities to solve this long-standing dilemma. For example, people living with HIV can receive text or video messages reminding them about the importance of taking their medication regularly and on time. Although the pace of technology development is very rapid, our theories of behavior have not kept up. There is not yet much theory or research available to guide the selection of specific motivational messages for specific patients at specific times. Our research team created a program to deliver tailored messages about the importance of taking medication to people living with HIV. We created messages addressing 10 common barriers to adherence, like cost, forgetting, or inconvenience. Each message was tailored to match participants' responses on a survey that they completed on their smartphone just before reading the motivational message. There were a total of 320 different message variations that were based on participants' self-reported thoughts, mood, stress, coping, and social support. In this pilot study, we recruited 37 people from a larger NIH-funded study about the links between daily experiences living with HIV and medication adherence. The participants were recruited from an HIV specialty clinic, and they were diverse in terms of gender, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and educational level. We randomly assigned people to receive messages that we expected to fit well with their current experiences, or messages that we expected to be less helpful based on how the person was feeling at that moment. After two weeks, each participant switched to the other set of messages. We asked participants to provide data on their acceptance of the tailored messaging intervention, on its usefulness, and on the technology's ease of use. We also looked at attrition to find out if people would continue to use the messaging software over time. Finally, we compared adherence between study groups. Acceptance of the intervention was high based on 76% enrollment and 85% satisfaction. Participants also said they found the software easy to use. The major barrier was attrition, with 59% of people failing to complete surveys by the time they got to the end of the study. The most common complaint was that they got bored with the messages over time. Participants' adherence improved up to 15% over the course of the study which is a clinically significant change. Unfortunately for our original theory, this improvement seemed to have nothing to do with the type of messages they were receiving. Instead, everyone improved when they crossed over from their originally assigned treatment group to the opposite one. The good news here is that automatic tailored messages can improve medication adherence in HIV. The bad news is that we still don't know exactly how or why. Some possible explanations involve people paying more attention to messages whenever there is a change, or over a period of time. Overall, what we learned from this study is that people with HIV are willing to use a smartphone to receive tailored messages, and that this type of message is potentially helpful in improving medication adherence. What we unfortunately don't know is specifically what content helps to make those tailored messages most effective. We did learn some things about what helps people to continue using the technology over time. These findings will inform future research as we continue looking for the best ways to improve medication adherence.